Well, Aries, I'm back, and here it is. I'm going to set the karmic wheels in motion, as I usually do, looking at this month of April 2024 with some pretty big astrological slash karmic events taking place. That stationary retrograde Mercury is the first big one, regulating your third and sixth house, communications, and workplace activities, health, debts. That conjunction of the moon with Pluto on the... <coughs> third slash fourth in your zone of friendships is uh, going to work in conjunction with the retrogression of Mercury. Retrogression of Mercury for you is not a great thing. Planets that govern those difficult parts of your horoscope will always uh, have their power enhanced and you don't want malefic planets having their power enhanced as we see here. So there could be some problems with communication with uh, the acquisition of profits for your business if you're running an independent business that's all governed by the 11th house the next important event is the new moon eclipse on the 9th here we see it taking place in your sun sign this is particularly important as it shows new beginnings in terms of the way you regard yourself, the way you present yourself in relationships. That's because the sun and the moon will be fully aspecting your seventh house of relationships. That retrograde Mercury will also continue up until the 25th to govern your communications and to create a whole lot of problems if you're not careful to think carefully to take your time in making decisions and hurling accusations at your partners or friends we see here the trine aspect to the south node here on the 13th that can improve things and gives a better emotional understanding of the past and where you've been what things you've done wrong your partner's done wrong and an opportunity for you to sort that out with the exception of this square aspect to Mars and Neptune, that will have happened around the 13th and 14th. So just when you think things are going well, there are problems there. Again, that square by the moon is going to trigger a lot of those emotional aspects. And that's important this month because the moon is involved in the eclipse at the outset of the month. Moon moves into your fifth house on the 16th which has to do with your children that again is important why i'm raising that issue here is because the sun which was part of that eclipse governs this part of your horoscope your children your creativity <coughs> love affairs and whatnot so when the moon comes back in there it's bringing that new moon energy into the picture and highlighting that area of your horoscope there before it leaves it makes a square aspect to Jupiter and Uranus, best not to overinflate ideas, or if children, your parent, are overflating any issues, it's best to be non reactive in that situation. The Sun makes its move to Taurus the 20th. It's going to be followed by these planets later, not this month. But while the sun is moving through your second house in this third week of the month, a lot of focus there on your finances. Be careful not to make that obsessive. You see that square aspect, especially on or around the 21st and 22nd, it's going to be a perfect right angle to that obsessive Pluto. Pluto rules your eighth house here. Notice also <coughs> the full moon on the 25th, 24th, my apologies, which highlights that square aspect we're talking about. That's going to continue for a while. Actually, it begins before the sun enters into the sign of Taurus. So money issues are going to be big, high up on your agenda as the month comes to a close you're still not going to get rid of these troublesome 
Saturn, Mars, Neptune aspects in your 12th house, requesting you to take an honest look at your past, work on those events, experiences that are haunting you. At some point, you've got to resolve all that stuff. This is a perfect month to do that due to the retrogression. Although I said that's not great for your uh, communication, it does give you an opportunity for pause, to reflect, to reappraise the way you've been approaching your relationships along with these three remaining planets at the end of the month governing this 12th house showing you things you may not want to see but those things will come up nonetheless giving you the opportunity to resolve your past and actually Venus did <laughs> sneak into the second house just as the month ended ruling your relationships that's going to continue to be a little bit of a problem for you. We'll talk about that next month <clears throat> due to the combustion or the proximity of Venus to the Sun. I'm looking forward to talking to you about that more next month if you'll join me again. Don't forget to take a look at some of the other text-based readings we've done for the month of April. You can look at that at astrology.com.au. Please give us your subscription. Click on that subscribe button. Send us your like, tell your friends, drop me a line. I'll be here next month. Hope to see you again then. Take care now, Aries. Bye-bye.